My name is Ryan Austin. I'm the chairperson of the Public Works Committee. Uh, let's go around the room and take a quick roll. Joe Eichstead, City Engineer. Nick Dooms, Assistant City Engineer. Paul Voller, Public Works Superintendent. Tom Rayholm, District 4, Alderman. Dennis Pollock, 6th Ward, Alderman. Thank you. Item 1, call the meeting to order. The meeting is now called to order. Item 2, review engineering and street department monthly activity report. Paul, you want to kick us off? Sure thing. Uh, the report is attached. Um, just some highlights. The uh, garbage and recycling collection continued to be pretty consistent over previous years. Um, estimating to be around 460 tons of garbage for and uh, 105 tons of recycling. Um, our Cherry Street project uh, is complete. Uh, it was paved um, July 25th. Um, everything is backfilled. Only thing that's left, so it's not really complete, but the only thing that's left to do is the site rest restoration and then touch up the restoration that was done in the spring of the year. We're going to wait to do that um, in middle to late September just because with the current temperatures if the lawn isn't watered it's not going to grow anyway so it's just going to grow weeds so um, that will sit with being black dirt here for, for a little bit better than a month. Um, we've also completed the underground utility work on Fremont Street between 13th and 14th and the curb and gutter was being poured today um, so we'll work in the next few weeks to get that that work completed as well um, same thing the restoration piece would wait until the middle to late september piece there also as well um, our construction crew is also now on ninth avenue um, and that's the work that we got completed in the last two or three weeks uh, we're expecting here the end of august first part of september to have to move back on to uh, the west jackson street project to complete the um, the water main on that, and then we'll be um, working towards the end of the year. Our street maintenance, just a few highlights. Uh, last weekend um, was the national BMX race that at the East Side Compost site that seemed to have gone really well. So we had some preparation for that. Um, we worked with the um, fire fire department and completed the restoration of the. Uh, fire fire station addition at station one um, and then uh, we completed the preparation for our chip sealing program which the trucks the truck sprain or the the major part of it putting a surface on that's scheduled to start next week on August 11th and August 12th and then there'll be a day or possibly two after that week that um, that will clean up the remainder of the project. Um, our sign shop, uh, as I spoke last month, um, we haven't been getting our full supply of paint. Uh, since the second week of July, we've taken delivery of approximately 200 gallons of paint. So we're, we're probably right around delivery of just shy of 50% of what we had in our bid. Um, but we're supposed to start see, possibly start seeing more of that come. Um, so we, everything that we've had, we've obviously put out, um, done some center line on 3rd Street, Lincoln Street, Chestnut, 24th, 16th, um, Baker, and 1st Street. Um, then we painted crosswalks in, in various areas around some of the businesses. And then uh, since we don't have um, the paint, you know, obviously this spring we uh, went through the parking ordinance. So the, the guys are working diligently on that as well. Um, so like I say, we've been kind of hamstrung a little bit with the work that we can do there, but um, hopefully we can start seeing some more paint here. Apparently our contact no longer works for the company, so we now finally have somebody else that we can talk to. Um, so our shop then, same thing. This time of the year there isn't really that many major projects that are going on it's mostly just maintenance work you know we're not transferring from one season to the next uh, so we had a hydro hydraulic cylinder and a quad axle dump truck that um, the seal was leaking on so we uh, switched it from an inverted ram to a, a standard ram uh, 
we've been chasing around uh, a problem with the transmission on a garbage truck for uh, multiple days, and we finally um, found that there was a, a bad wire harness. So when the wire harness typically goes bad, they recommend chase, changing out the shift solenoid also, so that, that was completed. Otherwise, it's just traditional um, maintenance work because we're halfway through the year, changing oil, changing tires for both ourselves, the police department, and the fire department. So with that, that's all I have. Thanks, Paul. You spoke of some constraints with paint. Any other material-related constraints to speak of? Uh, no. Um, everything else, we, uh, <coughs> we got our order in in a timely fashion this spring for materials, um, and we got that all on time and everything like that. So otherwise, no. Any questions for Paul? Uh, uh, yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, on your garbage trucks, are they working pretty well? Have you had any major problems with any of the trucks? Or no, no. I, I think um, you know the switch. I think is into the the third year now, um, and I believe everything is going pretty smooth. Um, we have had some issues with um, people putting incorrect products in the recycling and things like that. Um, but otherwise, it's moved. Everybody has moved to it pretty well. So, I mean, as far as the trucks mechanically are working fine. Okay. Yeah. Thank correct. You. Yep. The the truck that we actually were having that transmission issue is the old. Well, it's the oldest active one in our fleet. Um, it was one that we purchased in. Uh, I'm going to probably say the wrong date. 2017. It was actually originally our recycling truck. Um, so, uh, it's pretty standard for. The, apparently through talking with our shop that having those issues because the the, vib the vibration of the constant starting and stopping of the transmission the wire harness wears and then they just recommend to replace that solenoid at the same time so okay fine thank you any other questions Tom yeah Paul you mentioned about I think you mentioned anyway about uh, people putting improper items in the recycling can you expound on that a little bit of what's going on or um, yeah, or do, so it's, or, or do we have to re-educate the people maybe what they can put in? <laughs> and that is what the intention is for this fall um, because we are looking at also um, doing some different stuff with the compost tags. So we're going to send out our plan, our original plan, I guess, is is to send out a mailer um, this fall or around the first of the year with that new, re new recycling tag. And then also, just like we did when we did the garbage cans, um, the educational piece again of what goes in, what doesn't go in, and things like that. So the issues that we're having are, um, don't know if it's an error, don't know if it's laziness or just accidental, you know. But it's putting garbage into gar into the recycling container. Um, it's we've had uh, two issues here, I think, in the last month and a half, two months, where uh, someone has changed their oil and they put the oil in like a gallon jug of some sort and put that in the recycling container and then obviously once it goes into the truck the compactor of the truck you know the oil blows all over the place and now we have a contaminated situation you know so um, it's just things like that most of it's just standard garbage you know that doesn't belong in there um, but uh, it, it's yeah Thank you. okay Joe so for the engineering department, uh, the month of July, uh, Water and Light started billing for the transportation utility. Uh, we've had just a few calls so far uh, from, from uh, utility customers. Um, capital improvement planning, we have been doing um, some initial scoping meetings uh, regarding uh, the new database um, and how we might be able to integrate that into our, our um, planning process. Uh, in addition, um, we're anticipating bringing the the updated five-year plan that we we do have back to the Public Works Committee either in September, um, hoping September or October, uh, for review um, at this at this committee. Uh, for traffic-related items, uh, we uh, we reviewed the Fourth Avenue and West Grand Vision Triangle. Um, just finalizing that so um, as you leave fourth avenue here and try to get on east grand uh, with parked vehicles there 
Uh, there was concerns about having adequate vision for making that turn safely. And then regarding stop sign yield sign requests, there was um, four intersections that we just completed the traffic study on, on Peach Street, three of them on Peach Street, and one on Apple Street. And I sent those reports out via email this afternoon uh, to the committee. Um, so certainly take a look at those and, and we, can, we can go from there. Um, if there isn't any recommended changes at this point, but um, you know, coming out of the, our, our initial review and, and data that we collected. The signal grant project that's currently out for bids for the second round, um, it's noted in the packet that the bid opening is scheduled for August 10th. Uh, just yesterday that was pushed back to August 16th to accommodate uh, ensuring bids from, from contractors. Regarding maintenance projects, uh, sidewalk concrete cutting is currently underway. Um, anticipate that their work will likely be complete here this week. And then um, some sidewalk curb and gutter maintenance uh, was underway as well. Regarding 2023 reconstruction projects, we're currently working on 9th, 9th Street South between Peach Street and Chestnut Street, uh, doing preliminary survey work and um, working on Oak Street uh, design as well as um, finalizing Apricot Street and Broadway design and starting to prepare for um, surveys for 2024 construction season. I guess that, that completes my update. Uh, oh, sorry, I guess I do have a couple other things here real quick. Um, continuing our search for engineering technician, uh, did have an interview today. Um, so we'll see how that, that goes um, in the near future here. But um, we also have um, some design complete for the head crossing on 32nd Street at Washington School. So we anticipate uh, being able to order that material, um, that signed material from TAPCO uh, so that we can hopefully get uh, the installation going here in the next, uh, I don't know, month or so, right around the start of school, I guess. And that, com that completes my update. Thank you, Joel. Any questions? Dennis. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, yeah, just, just one question, or a couple questions here. Uh, when will the Jackson Street Bridge be open? That'll be sometime, I think, the end of this, this month. And then when, when that part of uh, Jackson Street is, I guess, usable, how long, what's the timetable with West Grand Avenue? How long will that be so worked on? So yes, at, at the end of August, uh, we anticipate being able to switch over so we can open up this section down here by, by the bridge. Um, and then that last stage on West Grand, that'll be shut down until probably very end of October, first part of November. Okay, and that's, uh, what's the length of it? I mean, how, up, up to the other bridge or? Oh, um, that well, the, the the work is occurring just between Sixth uh, Avenue and Riverview Expressway, so that's that's okay. the length of the that scope of work. Okay, Joel. Thank you. Yep. Anyone else? Okay. Hearing none, we'll move on. Item three: Review proposals for a feasibility study, alternatives addressing vehicle delays and rail usage. Joel. So coming out of the July Public Works Committee meeting, um, the discussion from that meeting was we went through the three proposals that we had received and that um, part of the work between last meeting and now was to uh, see what the um, cost would be if we combined uh, various aspects from two of the proposals. Um, I did reach out to both of those companies and, and they did uh, go back and, and kind of do some um, 
cooperative work to see how they could align both of their proposals into one proposal back to the city. Um, they didn't provide any formal documentation at this point, but um, except for an email saying that they've communicated, they've worked out um, the, I guess, what, what the city was hoping to see, see the cost on. Um, the resulting fee would be uh, $32,000. Um, you might recall that the, the one firm had a proposal of 19000 and the other was 20000 And they had, at least in, in my opinion, um, uh, the one firm was, was heavy on the data collection and problem definition, where they could, um, I guess in theory, provide a cost of the current impacts to, to the community uh, with the current situation. Uh, which then the second firm was uh, much more um, equipped to perform a, um, I guess, a more thorough review of, of the improvements that could be made and the funding options that would be available. And so the, the recommendation, um, at least from staff, was to pursue the combination of those two firms, and the resulting fee is, is 32000 um, certainly, there's still options if the committee would like to um, look at going a different direction than that. Thank you, Joe. So, I think I heard you correctly. We don't have necessarily a, a scope of work provided by the two outfits. What, or, or do we? Well, we have their initial proposals, and basically, let's see if I've if I've got the documents here in front of me. So they, each of the proposals, we requested that they break out their, um, break out the work into different categories. First one being define con concerns and issues. Second, identify and compare alternative methods, identify cost, grant funding, implementation of alternatives, and then finally recommendation and so they, they did articulate on, on both of their proposals what their work would be under each of those categories. And so largely what we were asking um, from the, the two firms was in the, um, taking the defined concerns and issues, kind of um, combining their efforts um, on that portion of it, and then the remaining work um, would be from firm number two. Okay, so you feel comfortable, say, if committee was to approve this and move it to council, um, that we would be we would be getting everything that that we stressed as our concerns in our previous meeting. Yes. Yep. We should be, and and certainly then, you know, once we we get past this initial proposal stage, the they will provide a, an actual contract or agreement to the city, and you know, outline. The scope of services again in that contract um, and we'll review it again at that time to make sure that nothing's nothing's changed and it is in fact what we um, what we were asking for thank you any questions for Joe Dennis well just one question uh, Joe do you uh, feel comfortable that these two companies can work together and and not have any problems with each other or? yeah they seem to be um, both of them have been um, forthcoming and communicating with me and um, you know taking the initiative to, to reach out to each other so uh, I don't I don't see any real real issues there um, it's not uncommon for engineering firms uh, to I guess subcontract other engineering firms in for various projects um, so I'm sure they'll have their own agreement between each other. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? I think it's. I think this is something that has been a long time coming. Um, I think I think our citizens are old at least looking into this issue uh, to to try to come to some type of resolution with um, the the delays and um, the 
quite often horns that sound, especially on the west side of town. Um, so I'm going to make a motion to approve the com combined proposal from firm number one and number two uh, in a fee of $32,000. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll take it to vote. All in favor, respond with aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Okay, moving on to item four, review a change order request to the 2021 sewer lining contract to include lining for a 15-inch sanitary sewer pipe along Chestnut Street between Lincoln Street and Cliff Street. Joe? So um, I'll cover that one. Um, so just a quick background. Um, so we had a sinkhole that developed in Chestnut Street just west of Lincoln Street and um, did a little bit of investigation. We televised the sanitary sewer and the storm sewer and found that we actually had a couple uh, leaking joints in the um, sanitary sewer. Uh, the sanitary sewer is about 20 feet deep, 15 inch clay, it's about 75 years old. Um, so uh, once we identified that we had the leaking joints, we started to look at uh, different options to take care of uh, sealing them up before we um, finalize backfilling and, and restoring the street. So we looked at um, a couple temporary fixes. Uh, we looked at a spot liner, which um, you know would be putting a liner over the couple of uh, leaky joints, uh, which came to an amount of about ten thousand uh, dollars. We also looked at grouting the joints that were leaking. Um, and we, we found that cost to be somewhere between five and ten thousand uh, dollars as well um, But we considered these to be temporary fixes uh, Where we would have to come back at some point in the future and line the whole stretch anyways um, We were concerned that If we seal up these joints that the groundwater would would migrate and find other leaking joints and possibly create sinkholes in different locations on Chestnut Street so taking that all into consideration, uh, we looked finally at just lining the whole sewer line from manhole to manhole, so um, from uh, Lincoln Street all the way to Cliff Street. And <clears throat> like I said before, we looked at this as a good candidate for lining anyways. It's approximately 75 years old. It's, uh, it's clay sanitary sewer. It's, it's very deep, uh, something that we probably would not um, open cut replace anyways. Um, and we found this to be a, a permanent fix, um, at least for the next 80 to 100 years if, if we did this. Um, so given that, um, we, we spoke with Sewer, our lining contractor, who's in town doing our sewer lining kind of throughout town. Uh, so we're currently under contract with them. We asked them for a price, uh, and they quoted us uh, $95 per foot. Uh, for that stretch of sewer main. So um, $95 per foot for 270 feet uh, gave us a cost of uh, approximately $25,000. Um, so we um, looked at the price and considered that it's a permanent uh, fix uh, for the issue and then and also that given the um, the size of the pipe that would be lined and the extra mobilizations that the contractor would have to do uh, for both televising the line before they line it and then coming back again to actually line it, that this was a, a fair price. Um, so given all those things um, and given our policy uh, that requires um, public works approval for any change orders over $5,000, um, given all those things we're asking, um, uh, for uh, approval of, of, of this change order. Thank you, Nick. Dennis, any questions? Uh, yeah, I, well, ju just one question to 25,000. Uh, uh, no problem with, with that. Would it, is there enough money budgeted in that? Is that how you're looking at paying this? And Right. Right, so a couple things. So with the contract, we um, actually had some work that we um, did not complete that we were anticipating doing as part of the contract. So we saved about $10,000 by not doing that work. So about, almost half of it is paid through that. 
but in addition to that, we had um, budgeted uh, approximately $550,000 for the project. And with this change order, that would put us up to about $420,000. So we're well under what we budgeted anyways for the work. Okay, and then uh, it kind of surprised me that uh, this clay pipe actually is in pretty good shape. Yeah, it's, a, it's what we would consider a good candidate for, for lining. So it's, yeah. it's in decent shape structurally, um, just enough that we can align it, but it's, it's pretty typical that we see the leaking joints at this point. So it's a perfect candidate, something that if this didn't come up anyways, that we'd probably line it in the next few years anyways. So I have no problem with the lining. I'm just thought with it being a clay pipe, normally uh, everything, well, sounds like the lining is, is the answer. So thank you. So what, what type of assurances are there with the lining process, if any? Is there any type of warranty? Um, yeah, so they do warrant their work, um, but it's, I'd have to look up the specifics on it. Um, it is pretty typical that you would get 80 to 100 years, if not more. They've been lining uh, probably for at least 40 years now nationwide. Um, so it's a, it's a trusted uh, fix and it's, we use it quite a bit for when we have deeper sewer that we wouldn't probably want to get into and try to open cut it anyways. Um, but yes, typically you probably see 80 to 100 years um, is what they're anticipating with it. But yes, we are, we have our, because it's the work is under our contract that we have with Visual Sewer right now, it would, it would have the same protection as the rest of the lining that we're doing in town. So, Do you know what that is? To be honest, I'd have to look it up to, okay. to see what, the, what that is precisely. Yeah. It t typically the way the, and I don't know the values offhand, but typically there's the, the warranty on the, on the workmanship on the install, and then there's some manufacturer's warranty on top of that yet. Okay. All right. I'd be interested to know that info if you want to send it along to me. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, just one uh, quick, uh, getting off the subject just a second, but on Chestnut Street, there that sewer is down quite deep. Uh, do you, to your knowledge, is that also a clay pipe on that lake? If you don't have the answer, that's fine. But yeah, further down, I'd, I'd have to look. Um, I would imagine so. Um, my guess is all the way to. Um, Probably Third Street, I suppose. But yeah, we'd have to look just to verify. Yeah, no, no, that's okay. I, I just uh, aware of the problems they had quite a few years ago out there. But uh, okay, you don't have to look it up. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? I'll make a motion to approve this change order at a cost of ninety-five dollars a foot and a length of two hundred seventy feet. I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, we'll go to vote. All in favor, will respond with aye. 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 Ayes have it. Moving on to item five: review the referral list. Joe? So there was a few that were added on, um, or at least a couple anyway. Um, number 12, I added on to the list, but um, I believe that's scheduled at wastewater. Yeah, uh, I, I think uh, maybe we leave it on there. After the wastewater, we may potentially want, okay. want to meet as a, as a committee. And then uh, Alderperson Rayom submitted a referral that's identified on there, number 13, for a quiet zone um, for trains on the east side of town. And that referral document's attached. Joe, is there, I mean, would we be able to take a look at that particular section of track and catch any maybe low-hanging fruit that we know of that would qualify or disqualify that run? Yeah, we can. I mean, we can pull out the documents that we had put together previously and and bring it before the committee. Okay. 
Any questions about referrals? Okay, moving on. Item six, set the next meeting date. What do we have? Looks like the eighth. Is the chambers open, Joe? Yes, September 8th, it is open. Okay, September 8th, 5 p.m. it is. Item seven, adjournment. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll second it. Okay, I'll, I'll make the motion. Aye. We're all in favor. Thank you, everyone. Have a great evening.